We're so thankful and so glad that you're here tonight. Seeking the presence of the Lord, seeking His face. Coming to be taught of Him so that you might do the things that He's purposed for you to do and live the life. He sacrificed so much for us to have. The life of Christ. The life of Jesus. It's an easy decision and it is an obvious choice every day when you allow the Holy Ghost to make a clear distinction between your life and the life of Jesus. And when you can see the beauty and the splendor of his life, the glory and the majesty of his life. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am certain that you have no problem denying your life, denying yourself. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for this wonderful work of grace and this wonderful work of power that fills your people with an anointing of the Holy Ghost so that they can do the things, oh God, that you've purposed us to do, that we can represent you like you've, like you've chosen us to represent you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Tonight, I want to minister to you on something that I pray that you would take to heart. I'm going to talk to you about how to be great in God. I'm going to talk to you tonight about how to have an increase of faith in your life. I think that it's so important that everybody recognizes that the Lord didn't say, without good worship and praise, you cannot please me. I hope that you understand tonight that the Lord didn't say, without memorizing a bunch of verses in the Bible, you can't please me. I hope you understand tonight that the Lord didn't say, without developing a powerful, um, zealous, and fervent prayer life, you can't please me. No, he said something that actually is integrated into every one of those things that I just mentioned, if they're going to be real. He said, without faith, it is impossible to please me. And I want you to understand tonight how that you might be able to increase in the realm of faith. I want you to recognize tonight that if there's any gift of the Spirit that you want to have operating in your life, it is the gift of faith. I want you to understand tonight if there's a life worth living, it's the life of Jesus Christ, not the one that you've designed for yourself. Because the life that Jesus Christ has doesn't have affliction, doesn't have bondage, doesn't have torment, doesn't have all of the stress and all the things that is placed upon you with your seeking your own ambitions. I believe that if a lot of people would just turn their jobs into a mission field instead of a place where they're going to get promoted and, and with all the other things that they have wrapped around the ideas of why they're at work. And uh, I'm afraid that way too many people seek to find their own meaning and value of life within the identity of their job, of what everybody else says about them, of their own earthly accomplishments. And I want you to understand that that absolutely works, the opposite works counter to faith growing and maturing in your life. Tonight, I'm going to help you understand that in, in finding your place with God, where you find your place in Him, where you all of a sudden recognize that you stand before the living God, that you stand in His presence, and that you have a commission, that you've been given a job to do by Him. You've been giving, you've been giving a resource and divine ability to do things that you, you really just can't even begin to grasp right now because it's a total God thing. It's, it goes way beyond anything that you could ever learn or that you could ever think or that you could ask. It's a divine grace that's been given to you. And there's only one way that will ever be activated in your life. And once again, as I said it before, I'll say it again. It is a result of an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And some of you have had encounters in here, but you didn't move forward. And so I'm going to open up to... With you tonight, I'm saying, once again, you've had encounters, but you didn't move forward. You stayed where you were. You got up and you did the same things the next morning. You bowed to fear and intimidation. Satan wants you to bow and worship him. He's set on you bowing and worshiping him. And uh, I'm not going to repeat some of those things that we said this morning. It would be good for you that weren't in the meeting to go, to go back and to give yourself... Um, to, those, to the things that the Spirit of the Lord say in this place. And it, you know, the, 
And praise God for the laborers, uh, people who uh, support the ministry and work with the ministry and, and putting these, th the, these messages up on YouTube so that you can go and you can listen to them anytime. Praise the Lord for all the ministries that are on YouTube. And I'm, I'm telling you, when you really get hungry and you get thirsty to be used with, by the Lord in a greater way, to begin to move in the faith that He has for you, to see faith increase in your life, when you get hungry for these things, oh, there's so much ministry that the Lord has made available right now on the Internet. Yeah, the Internet has a whole bunch of vile things too, but my goodness gracious, forget about that nonsense. Grab a hold of the things of the Spirit. I mean, obviously, folks are making choices all the time. They're, they're making choices all the time to live by the ruination of the lies and, and harassments that would torment their mind and that would cause them to believe things that have no, absolutely nothing to do with that which God said in His Word for us to do. And I pray that those things will come to an end. That the doubt and the unbelief, that the ideas and the concepts that have nothing to do with the Word of God would be absent from your mind. I, I believe that too, too many people satiate their bodies with food, with drink. They satiate their physical realm with all the comforts that they can find. They, they go after, some people go after the very best of whatever they can find for entertainment, whatever they can find to please themselves. What well, meanwhile, their spirit is very, very weak. Their spiritual life is very unattended to. In fact, if they ate as much physically as they did spiritually, they wouldn't be up walking around. They would be sick and diseased. It's yeah. one thing to fast for a little while, but if you're constantly fasting, you're going to get sick and diseased. You, you listen to me. And especially, you know, you're just... Of course, it's not fasting in the sense of fasting where you're seeking the Lord. That's a faith realm, but just not eating. Just not eating properly. You'd be sick and diseased. And many people are sick and diseased, and they wonder why they can't move in mountain-moving supernatural faith. They wonder why they can't get out of the condition that they're in and make advancements in the kingdom. And I'm here to tell you tonight and help you tonight to, to see a clear pathway forward. I'm here tonight to participate with you having an encounter with God so that you can move forward, that you see a clear pathway forward. Hallelujah. Listen, if whatever it is that the Lord's laid on your heart to do, let's say that the Lord has laid on your heart and, he, and you've been blessed um, with this wonderful outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And when you've been blessed with a wonderful outpouring of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to tell you that you're going to have the spirit of prayer and supplication on you because that's one of the things that the Holy Spirit is always doing. And if you don't give yourself to that prayer, and letting that prayer develop in your life, it's just going to be weak. It's going to be frail. It's going to have very little power to accomplish anything. But ha however, on the other side, if you would give yourself passionately to prayer, you give yourself passionately to the pursuit of developing in your life those things that the Holy Spirit has freely given you so that you can function in them. You understand that you stand before the living God. Elijah understood he stood before the Lord. The prophets of old, they understood that they stood before the Lord and because they did, they had a faith realm at work in their life which caused them to be able to subdue kingdoms. Right. Hallelujah. Uh, my, there are so many things that God has given us the ability to do and it's time for us to take up that, uh, that mantle and begin to do them. Hey, listen, if, if you want to, if, if let's just say that you have uh, been given um, uh, the ability to play a musical instrument. My, if you would begin to give that over to the Lord and you begin to passionately pursue that and you give yourself to the development of that skill that beyond that which you could do out of human ability, oh my, what God will do with it, He will take it, He will shape it in your life and He will use it in such radical ways. But if you just kind of, you know, if you just kind of uh, flip it with it, you, you're not consistent with it, probably not much developed. We, we went home and we watched the last part of the World Cup. There was nobody out there just walking around. There was no one in, out there half-hearted 
absolutely committed to this thing. I mean, at the end of it, everybody had the extreme emotions. The Argentines were crying and the Germans were laughing and jumping up and down. But look at the passion that was there. And you think, my, if God's people would so give themselves to this realm. But see what happens. It's not all exciting from the perspective of everything that belongs to the sense realm. It demands a development of an entirely different dimension of yourself for you to be having a good time. Because you only have a good time with what you see and what you hear and what you handle and, you know, those things within uh, the framework of that which is merely in uh, human. But how about if you develop yourself in the realms of the spirit? How about if you let the Holy Ghost to show you spiritual things where you come to visions and where you come to dreams, where you, where you begin to function and operate in the gifts of the Spirit because you've given yourself to those things that God has commissioned us to do. Looky here. I'm going to say it again. I said it this morning. I'm going to say it again, though. Uh, the reality of it is this. Christ Jesus has all power and authority. He said, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. Uh, the reality of it is if our gospel be hid, it's hid from those whom the God of this world has blinded their minds, lest they should be able to see. And here's where our state of affairs are right now. Here's the condition of the earth right now. Satan has, is far more effective in the financial realm than any uh, of God's people. Satan has more souls than he should have, more nations in prison than we could even imagine in view of the commission where Jesus said, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth, go. The reality of it is, the heavenly vision and being faithful with the heavenly vision is following after this divine commission that God has given to us to go turn people from the power of, God, from the power of Satan to the power of God to open up their eyes so that they might be able to see this glorious gospel. So the, rea the, the problem isn't on the side of the, the fact that Jesus has all authority. The problem isn't on the, on the side uh, of, of the, uh, the anointing having been supplied to you and me. The problem rests with you and I being willing to grab a hold of what God has said and stand there and believe and, and faithfully commit ourselves to doing that which he's commissioned us to do. I mean, imagine that you went into your company tomorrow and they decided that uh, over the weekend that they were going to make you the CEO and you just started working there last week. And they brought you in the office and they said, we're turning the company over to you. And um, you would feel a little bit intimidated, wouldn't you? Be a bit overwhelmed. What, what do you mean? I, I just graduated from school. You're going to make me the CEO. What's What's happening here? Well, you just won a prize. We put you, we put names in a hat and drew your name out. You're the CEO. We're going to raise you. You're raised, we're going to give you a, a raise from $30,000 to $130,000. dollars we're going to give you all these other things. And then we're going to give you people around you to help you learn the job. Well, my goodness, you could either just collapse and wilt away in fear, or you could step up to it and say, well, I don't, I don't know anything, but I'm willing to learn. Let's go with this. If you're sure, if you're really sure you want to do this, let's go with it. Well, pretty much Father has done that, but whole, on a whole nother scale. He set you into his place to, refer, to fully represent him and has given you the best instructors and aides and confidants so that you, and consultants <laughs> so that you might be able to fully measure up to the responsibility of the commission and the job assignment. And we want your eyes to be opened up to these things because faith is not going to increase in your life until you get activated in, in, a, in a passionate pursuit to see it happen in your life. As long as you're waiting around for another day, the other day will not come. And what you're going to have is you're going to have more, you're going to see more problems and you're going to have all the complaints and you're going to see what's not being done rather than what is being done. You're going to see lost opportunity instead of opportunity. You're going to see failure instead of success. And what a, what a terrible pit. And if anybody's in that pit today, I want to throw you a rope so you can climb out. Hopefully you're not, if we throw you a rope, you're not going to say, ah, now nah, I'll stay here for a little while longer. I'm kind of getting used to it now. We're going to throw you a rope so you can climb out. Hallelujah. If there's anything that's got to happen is there's got to be an earth shaking, Holy Ghost revival that takes place in the lives of God's people. There's got to be something that takes them from the tired state of being worn out because they gave all 
that they had to their job. They gave all that they had to the pursuit of their own interest. <laughs> and when it came time for the things of the Spirit and it came time for the things of the Lord, they were just too exhausted. And we're trapped, by the way. We're trapped. There's nothing we can do. Uh, we have ourselves in a mortgage. We're uh, in, in hock. We've hocked our lives up to our neck and we, in fact, up to our nose. And, uh, and, you know, and we're having to tip our head back to breathe. And so, you know, the system and society has made more of a slave out of us today than any uh, system or culture that ever existed in history. And we're hoping that the Lord understands. He does not understand. One day... See, Satan will be worshipped one way or the other. One day he's going to brand people. He's going to make people. He will control all the economy. You will not be able to buy or sell unless you receive his brand, the brand of his name in your hand or in your forehead. And he's doing that even now. I mean, the people who give themselves over to his intimidation and bow to his fear and bow to his constraints that he places upon us they're already being marked. They're marked. And the beautiful thing is now anybody can get liberated at this very moment. You can get liberated from slavery. The brand will be removed. God will give, heal you and hallelujah. The skin will be made new and you never, no one would ever know that you had ever been branded. But then of course we know in that day those who bow to the Lord, we know, those who bow to Satan, we know how the Lord feels about it. His wrath and his anger will burn against them in hell for eternity. That's how he feels about people bowing to worship Satan. In any measure, you can read about it in Revelation 13 if you're uncertain about that. I would encourage everybody in this place to go ahead and decide that they're going to become the servants of the Lord and be sealed by the Holy Ghost to learn how to walk in the Spirit and whatever adjustments you need to make in order to make God uh, first and foremost in your life. Then you make those adjustments. And then you begin to say, wait a minute, I've been commissioned by God to go and do things. Now let me say this once again. It is a good thing to be a baby. At least you're a baby. And I know people don't like to be called a baby. A three-year-old doesn't want to be called a baby. And, uh, you know, so you start getting that early on in life. But I'm going to tell you there's a certain dimension in my life that I'm always uh, the, a child of the Lord. I'm a child of the King. And we can write, to, we, we can say with John, I write unto you, um, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his namesake. And so that's a good dimension of being a baby. But Father wants us to grow up. And he wants us to become sons. He wants us to become sons that are more mature sons, okay? And of course, as a child, don't misunderstand me. As a child, you're a son or you're a daughter. But he wants you to become sons that, have, that are young men, sons that have taken up responsibility, sons that are doing something in the kingdom, sons that have an anointing and have a, a fruit of that anointing operating in their life. <laughs> See, he said, I write unto you young men, because you're strong. God wants to strengthen you. He wants to cause you to increase more and more. He wants the faith to be enlarged within your life. Now, you've got a battlefront. You have a battlefront. I mean, the battlefront is the powers of doubt and unbelief coming out against you. The last time I was here with you, was last Sunday, I talked about a yoke that I could break off of your neck. I talked about a yoke that has two reins, a reign of circumstance and situation, and Satan pulls on that yoke, and you have no, you, there's nothing you can do but to go with that pull because it's just going to hurt too much. It's going to cause you too much pain unless you uh, release the pressure by turning with whatever the circumstance or the situation demands. And uh, Satan is the one who uses circumstances and, and situations to turn your neck, not God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then the other rain is all of his sin and of his, his sin and iniquity. In either case, we find ourselves under uh, the authority of a satanic realm which should have absolutely no rights over us. Because the Lord has given us power to tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power 
of the enemy. He's given us ability to stand against all the wiles of Satan, but only in the context of being strengthened by the power of his might, only in the context of learning how to walk in the Spirit and live by the Spirit instead of walking in your own mind, your own mental ascent, your own mental ideas. When Peter, for example, said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, what Jesus said is he recognizes that 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 Peter was speaking by the Spirit of the Father. He wasn't speaking out of his intellect. Everybody there among the disciples were already convinced that he was the Son of God. But what happened was the, the, they, they weren't speaking and Peter began to speak not out of an intellectual knowledge but out of a revelation knowledge that simply happened because the Spirit of his Father was speaking through him. And of course, that's how Jesus said we were supposed to be uh, living our life from this time forward, you know. <laughs> they said we got, God would bring us be, uh, before magistrates and kings and influential people. And then don't take thought for what you're going to say. And uh, listen, don't take thought for what you're going to say. When you can encounter someone, God brings someone tomorrow into your life and sits them right there in the middle of, of your path. And they're there not by coincidence, not so that you can impress them with you so they will like you. But God has set them in your path so that you can minister to them the gospel of salvation, that they not spend eternity in hell, and that they come to know this wonderful light that is in Jesus. And now you can't speak of God by yourself, otherwise you're going to ruin it. It'll be just another propaganda, another sales pitch, another whatever, you know. Talking about the weather, kind of nonsense, meaningless talk. But if you would rely upon the Holy Spirit, if you would rely upon the living God, then the Spirit of the Father would speak through you, their hearts would be changed, their lives will be touched. You wouldn't be talking to them like a scribe and a Pharisee, but speaking as one who has authority to give them a new heart and give them a new spirit to release them from the prison. Everybody says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Oh yeah, well, if the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, then He's anointed you to preach the gospel to the poor. Hallelujah. That's the outworking of being baptized in the Holy Ghost of the fire. That's the outworking of the Spirit of the Lord being on you. And, and what happens is that many people have had a real genuine encounter and experience with God, but then fear and intimidation comes. Satan's fear and intimidation comes and demands that you bow before him, and many people bow. Rather than standing up with the authority of the living God, knowing your place to stand in him, for they that dwell in God dwell in his love, they that dwell in his love dwell in God. And guess what that love does? It casts out, throws off all fear. Now you get to go ahead and give yourself to doing what God's commissioned you to do. You just ran through the troop of fear and intimidation. And guess what's going to happen at the end of that event? Your faith will grow. Your, your, the anointing in your life will have increased just simply because you were willing to obey God's charge, to keep his charge, to keep his commission, to do what he's commanded you to do. And it won't be long and you'll begin to discover your place in His presence. It won't be long and He won't be a God far, far away. He'd be God very present, very living, very real. It won't be long and you say, Father, all I want to do is live for you. I want to give all that I have and my abilities and my skills and my talents. <laughs> I love hearing the testimony of Catherine Coleman because she said, you know, I had no talents. So I think that this is really great for those who feel like they have no talents. I have no talents. I have no skills. I'm an ugly duckling. I don't even, I'm not pretty, I'm not even, I don't even have any kind of appeal. I'm awkward and uncoordinated. Pretty radical, huh? And she said to the Lord, I don't have anything at all to offer you but me. And if you can take me, this creation that you made, and you can use me, I give myself, my whole body to you. Every part of me I give to you. And as real as she had an event where she could have taken someone and said, this is the day that I cease to live. This is the day that I made the choice for Jesus Christ to live instead of me. That same event needs to happen to you and me. 
That same event needs to happen in our life to where we go ahead and we run the risk. We go ahead and we count it all a loss. We go ahead and we say we're going to throw all in for God. We're going to give everything over to Him. I was recently ministering to a person that just came to Jesus and he's still a little uncertain and, and I saw demon power in his life so I just cast out the devil out of him right there on the spot. And I said, and I give you a new heart and a new spirit, says the Lord. I spoke on behalf of God. Amen. Because that's what the Lord has given me. He's anointed me. Hallelujah. To open up prison doors. And, and that's, if I find any interest in anybody, I don't ask them if they want to be saved, I save them. Amen. Good. Hallelujah. I've been, I've, I've been sent by the Master to do His work. Amen. And wherever Jesus is manifested, He destroys the works of Satan. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, that's what the anointing is about, to, open, to proclaim liberty to them that are uh, captives and in prison. And we want you to do it. We want you to start doing it. We want you to stop waiting for another day. But we know that you've got to be baptized in the Holy Ghost for you to even begin to do this. And when the fire of God hits you, you're going to do this. And then you're going to have to deal with the threatenings and you're going to have to deal with the issues. You're going to have to deal with the earthly concerns. Peter had just as many as you have. You're not going to be standing in a unique company that you had a unique situation that nobody else around the great company, the great cloud of witnesses had. Huh? He had the same issues. He had a family. He had a family business that had been in, uh, who knows, in their family for maybe generations upon generations. And he was willing to leave everything for the sake of the call. Now, what has God called you to do? And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ right now that every soul sitting in this place knows what God has called them to do. And that you give your whole self to doing it. The call of God is in something that is elusive. It's very clear. It's very, Father has made it very certain. Now, not anyone in here should wonder about it. <laughs> now give yourself to those things and watch His faith increases in your life. How are you going to ever begin to move mountains unless you begin to speak to them. <laughs> how are you ever going to command the elements, the wind and the wave, unless you begin where you're at right now? How are you going to ever step into a greater realm of domination over the things that Satan would try to do to keep you from moving forward unless you come up against the heat of the battle? Satan has no right to hold souls that you know in his possession. He has no right. He has no right to afflict you or your family or the people that are around you. He has no right. He has no right to, to, to cling to, to hold the mass, uh, the, 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 the vast amount, the majority of all of the wealth in the earth. As I ministered to you today, out of Luke chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, he believes that all the kingdoms of the earth is his and that he can give it to whoever he wants to and the only way you're going to get it is to bow down and worship him. He believes that. Hey, even though it's not true, even though Father has completely defeated him, he, he, in Christ Jesus, he still believes it's true. He's, he's telling you that lie. He's propagating that lie. He's telling you you're not going to have anything. You're going to be without. You're going to be stranded. You're, gonna be, you're going to be in debt. You're going to be on, on all of the things that he can come up with to threaten you, to keep you from moving forward the divine assignment that God has given you. Oh, to, to find faith at work. A faith that prompts you to go to prayer. Huh? So that now you begin to participate with a prayer of faith. Hallelujah. A prayer of faith that prays until heaven answers. A, pra a prayer of faith that know, has a relationship with God, that knows where they stand, that can say, only by my word shall it rain. Because that faith has already laid hold on the promises of God and through that interaction and that commission has heard from heaven and acts upon it. Now, I want you to look here in Zechariah with me, please. And I want you to take this real personally here. In Zechariah chapter 7, I want you to find your place before God. I, I, I'm telling you, dear people, if you find your place standing before God, walking with Him, being His servant, doing His bidding, standing in His place, representing Him, 
You'll certainly find your place in the body of Christ. You'll certainly get connected with the body of Christ. You'll certainly begin to start honoring the anointing. You'll certainly be, stop valuing all the things that the world is running after. And you'll start valuing those things that the world cares nothing about. You'll start valuing His wisdom. You'll start valuing His insight. You'll start valuing relationship with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Today, you know, we were watching the World Cup and I said, my goodness, I said, well, Reinhardt's over there praying for Germany and Carlos is praying for Argentina. I wonder whose, person's, whose prayers will prevail. Uh, but of course, we know that the Lord's not interested at all in, in sports and so he doesn't care who's praying. And it's true. He's not interested at all in sports and so he doesn't care who's praying. But he is interested in souls. Because otherwise someone would have to conclude that Reinhardt's prayers prevailed over Carlos Anaconda's prayer and all his team. And it's just not even true. But he is concerned about you and I subduing kingdoms. He is concerned about, look, there's too many nations have never heard the name of Jesus. Right now, Nepal is threatening that there is a Hindu movement right now going on. It has just risen up. And, and, and it's threatening to begin to put Christians in prison again to stop any kind of evangelism in that nation. Over my dead body. Literally. Over my dead body. Now, when did you get passionate like that? I really loved what um, uh, was set up for the, the missions training camp this year where they set up all these obstacles. They gave them a flag, each person a flag for the nation, a vision for the nation, but set up all the obstacles and all the challenges that they were going to have to overcome in order to get to the goal. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of challenges. And as long as you count your life dear unto yourself, you will not rise up. But when we begin to pray things like, Oh, sovereign Lord! <laughs> Revive again your work in the midst of us as in the days of old. Lord, raise up laborers to go into the harvest. Lord, raise me up. And we begin to understand that within that context, he said, you cannot go in the harvest, nor represent me until you endued with power from on high. For a gospel preached without power, a gospel preached without divine authority to cast out devils, a gospel preached without authority to liberate men's souls, to set captives free, to heal broken bodies, is no gospel at all. And as long as your life is on the line and your reputation is at risk, you won't do anything. Because Satan and circumstances will play in your risky, your place of riskiness, as it were, your place of self-interest, that you don't want your reputation ruined. You don't want to step out beyond your means. God's called you to move mountains. God's caused you to command trees to be plucked up by the roots and planted in the sea. God's commanded you and called you to represent all of heaven and empowered you to walk in the same anointing and same ministry he has. You're going to have to say goodbye to all that stuff you call sensible. I'm just turning me up because somebody can hear, nobody can hear me here. I think what happens is that, that people won't, they don't want to believe that what I'm saying is true. They don't want to believe. It's about I begin, when I, sometimes when I begin to say these things, I can feel the resistance. I can feel people pulling back. I don't have to do that. I can feel people begin to uh, be overwhelmed and imprisoned by their own circumstance and try to figure their way out of whatever it is that they're in that they might go and follow God. Just rise up and get running. Just forget about it all and get moving. Don't think twice about it. Get out of your mental ascent. It can never know God. The natural mind, the natural thinking, the natural human ability to try to apply the divine power of God's miraculous word of spirit and life will never work. You're going to have to be taken over by the Holy Ghost and the mind of Christ to recognize that your life is far more than the things that you've been valuing it at. And right now, I could prove it to you, because right now, if you were to die, you have no hope for your future without Christ Jesus fully in control. 
You, can, or you are getting ready to move from a place where you think that you have control over your life and that you think and you believe that you can ultimately produce the right outcome for yourself. But reality of it is that is all a lie and deception. It's all a lie and deception. Anything that you have right now, it is because of the goodness and the mercy of God that is equally given to both the righteous and the unrighteous. You're not, you're not even in a unique class yet. Are you with me? The rain and the sun and all the goodness of God and the food and the provision and your housing and your clothing, all of these things by and large, especially in this nation, is an overflow of the blessing of God upon this nation. All you're doing is reaping the blessings of someone else's sacrifice. What are you going to do? All you're doing is reaping the blessing of someone else's sacrifice. Are you going to be stuck in that blessing? Are you going to be stuck in that provision and not be willing to go and lay your life down also that that provision and that blessing may come to the nations that are still held in prison? Satan has no right to control the financial kingdom. He controls it, believe me. If you want to talk about this entity and that entity, forget about it. Does it even matter? We know Satan is behind the scene of it. And it, it, all men are as puppets on his strings. <laughs> it's just like one aide to Harry Reid said, and then another person that I know that knows another, uh, that don't even know each other, knows a, another uh, aide to Harry Reid. Harry would turn to him and say, I'm getting ready to say things that I don't believe a single word of. Because he's told by those who are going to get him elected in his party exactly what he's supposed to say and exactly what he's supposed to do. And that's the way it works. And there's just a puppet on a string and it just goes from one layer to another layer to another layer, ultimately to the one that's hidden behind the scenes, really pulling the strings, is Satan himself. And how much of that are you going to be under the authority of? All the way down to your paycheck. Ha 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 ha. Huh? All the way down to what you trusted for your living. Don't you put your trust in uncertain riches because I'm going to tell you right now, tomorrow they could be absolutely nothing worth. Uh, it, they could be worthless. They're just dollar bills, hundreds, the hundreds uh, thrown into the street because they have no value. But what happens when you begin to trust in God? What happens when you give yourself over to faith? Look at Elijah. Yeah. The Lord said, I'll take care of you. Hallelujah. Somebody said, God, somebody said that, you know, he, that uh, the Lord was feeding Elijah on roadkill. That's just not even true. That is not even true. It's, uh, that the birds were picking up roadkill and bringing it to Elijah. Well, funny, funny preacher, but it's just not even true. He was bringing provision from the king's table, and I don't know exactly how it was happening, but when it got there, it was perfectly clean and kosher. Hallelujah. <laughs> The Lord has a way to provide for us. He has a way to take what little we have and multiply it. He has a way to take us into a realm of faith where we do not have to live under the yoke of what some man decides that we're going to be able to earn in a single year and live as a slave before that master and be so worn out that we have no time for the master. And that's what everyone's up against. That's what everyone's up against as you're living in the midst of God's blessing. I watch in the third world countries as pastors, ministers live off of $100 a month. And people are very happy to make $20, $30 a month. And they're getting along just fine. <laughs> they're doing it just fine. I would do it a little bit different than they do it. I would go further out in the country, not be in the city where all the you know, stuff is, but you know, everybody to each their own. Some people got to be right in the middle of the group. I got to be way out away from all the stuff, but that's just the way that I am. But reality of it is, are you, are you, are we going to be willing to keep his charge? Are you going to be willing to say, I no longer live. I'm now going to learn how to rely upon the spirit of the Lord. I'm now going to learn how to live by faith and move in faith. And I've, I've seen a lot of people live by faith and move in faith. And my goodness gracious, if that's faith, please, I don't want any. Are you with me? Are you with me? I mean, goodness gracious, God, look, God hasn't called us to, 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 to no provision. He's, he provide all that we have need of. If you're, if you're moving in faith, you're going to have all that you have need of. I mean, my goodness, your kid's not going to be walking around with, you know, without, with, with ragged tennis shoes on and... and 
a shirt that's barely held together. I mean, are you with me? But Father, isn't, Father hasn't assigned us to poverty and misery. He's not. He's, a fine, he's assigned us to blessings. He's, he's, he's resigned us to his riches. And uh, those riches first being understood in the realms of the Spirit. Those riches first being understood functioning in this divine authority that is in Christ Jesus. To command what's going on in your mind. To command the thoughts that you're listening to. To command what's going on in your body, your physical body. Not to be overwhelmed, run to the doctor. I hope you lose your insurance, your medical insurance. I hope you lose it. Because then you're going to think more about, oh, i got to go to the doctor again because i got a little bump on my right knee and I'm sure it's cancer. That's what happens to a lot of people. They live in a fear continually. Oh, i got to go get another checkup. Another, oh, come on now. That, I'm telling you, that works counter to faith. Works counter to faith. Just works counter to faith. Hallelujah. It would be very good for you to identify the things in your life that are actually the enemies of faith, that are actually working opposite of you moving and growing and developing in faith so that you don't nurture them in your life anymore. <laughs> it's, it would be very good for you to identify those things that do belong to faith that you can go ahead and give yourself to that supernatural realm so that you can grow and increase more and more in there. And then by this time next year, we can see some serious things going on through your life. We can see some serious blessings and development going on in your life through the administration of the spiritual gifts that God has so purposed for you and I to walk in. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's going to do special works. These are the days of special Amen. miracles and special Amen. works and special graces. Amen. 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 I, I, a friend of mine told me about a, a vision that he had, and in the vision that he had, there was a little bit of money and a little bit of finances, and people were holding on to the things in their pockets. He saw people holding on to their money in their pockets like this. And he said, I, you, you hold on to your m money, whatever you, it means to you, it doesn't mean in that to me. And he put his hand over a little bit of change, and he said, in the name of Jesus, multiply, and it became a mountain of finances just multiplied under his hand as though money was coming out of the palm of his hand. Came out of the mouth of a fish. Can it come out of the palm of your hand? It multiplied. And, and what I've watched in this person's life who had this vision, that miracle wasn't just, wow, man, I had this, or, or that vision wasn't just a, hey, wow, I had this radical vision, and my goodness, I hope you have one too. <laughs> it produced faith within him, so he began to move and apply himself to that miracle realm, and you can see that multiplication of finances. I mean, it hit me. I said, my goodness, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to believe God that God's people will begin to move in a miracle realm of finances to see that 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 blessing of God multiplied in their life, but I'm also going to go ahead and go after the literal multiplication of the, of the money. I mean, come on, Jesus did it with a few loaves and fishes. Why is it, can, why you can't do it with like $100 bills? Just put your hand over the $100 bills. And ah, that, no one will notice. The Federal Reserve won't notice because they will be identical. They will be exactly what they produced. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because we have need of these things. We have need of these things. We are running wide open. We are, God is giving us so many connections right now to just diversify and be able to, to reach more people uh, in, in terms of those that we can inspire towards missions over the next 200 years. We run and run after it. We're going to run. And, and if you don't run after it, if your heart is not in it, if you're not looking at it in the right way, if you're not willing to lay down your life for it, if you're not willing to run the risk for it, if the, and, and laying down your life for it and run the risk for it is all in the context of doing what we've been commissioned by God to do, to go set these nations free, to go release those finances that Satan holds and says that are his, and Father has need of it in the kingdom to see those souls that are held in bondage under the power of Satan liberated and so with that we then lay down our lives and go wide open to do whatever we 
know how to do to see it happen. I mean, recently the Lord's been giving me, a, he's been giving me, because I'm running it, I'm willing to do it all. And the Lord's given me a faith to be able to see other people do the work. Because, you know, we're, it, it, you're, I mean, I've got to pace myself, you know. We, we can't just run on three, four hours of sleep kind of thing. And then that be all whacked out and then we get up because we've just been out at the ranch and we get up and we out working by eight o'clock and we come in nine, 10 o'clock at night. And you just keep working like that and you carry that kind of load for a long time and you're gonna get slapped worn out. You know what I'm saying? And so the Lord has recently, he hit me with the faith to see other people raised up that we can hire to do the job. Huh? But somebody said, well, praise God, brother. I mean, one person prayed for me. I pray God give you the strength of 10 oxen. Well, bless you. Bless you. I mean, my goodness. It's nice to be viewed as an ox. And, I, and, and if somebody can see my prov God's provision for me as be, me being 10 oxen now. <laughs> goodness gracious. Uh, I mean, I almost want to say, look, you know, don't pray for me, please. <laughs> or if you're going to do, believe for something bigger than that. Come on now, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, when we all begin to pull together in these things, when we all begin to, and I'm not talking about, somebody said, ah, you know, these pastors, they all want you to hook up with their individual vision. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. We hooked up with his righteous cause. In his heavenly vision. Nothing about some personal, individual, you know, vision and goal and, and fame and pursuit. That's nonsense. I, I can't even believe all the folks that listen to that nonsense. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right, yeah. That's why we're going to have a house church now. We're going we, 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 we're gonna to pursue our own vision. Did, what, what, what is that? Pursue your own vision. There's a heavenly vision. And it's a heavenly vision that is only going to fully be realized and take place because people individually within the church lay hold on God. They find their place before the Lord. Yeah. Listen to this. I want you to take this real personally tonight. Hallelujah. Once again, I'm glad you're here because God got you here. He brought you here. You can't leave because you're here by mandate. And you may say, wait a minute, mate, wait a minute. You know, um, uh, you know, I've been worn out and I'm weary and I'm fainting. Listen, you here and go, just, just hold tight, you know, grab a hold of the things in God, begin to give yourself more fully to do what God has commissioned to do because you're right on the precipices right now of the greatness of God. God's purpose is to make you great. Hallelujah. I don't want to be great in the earth. I'm going to be great in heaven. I'm going to be great in the kingdom of God. I want Father to look at my life and say, you fully lived for me everything I gave you. You wrung it dry. Hallelujah. I want the Lord to look at me and say, hey, you did more than I required of you. Huh? I don't see how that's possible. You know, you look, compare yourself to, to Reinhardt. And <laughs> Reinhardt, I, I think, what is it? What is the count? It's like 30 million people that he's counted the biggest crusades ever. 30 million people that he's brought into the kingdom of God through his ministry. I think it's that plus. And then, you know, the biggest crusades. And he feels like he hasn't done anything. Well, my goodness, give, give me a break. If you can compare yourself to Reinhardt, you just already, right? But Father has given you a commission. He's given you an anointing just the same. It's never too late. It took Moses 80 years to come into his call. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bodhisattva, Nanglebasa, Teredea. There's a lot of people that really started their ministry till later in life. Huh? To the foundation, the development of God. Don't faint, don't weary, press in. Understand who you are in God. Begin to get with the commission. You want to grow in faith, then you're going to have to start moving in faith. You want to see the dead raised, then you're going to have to start believing God. You can raise the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. I do. Amen. I do. I believe that if I lay hands on the sick, they will recover. Baby got touched this morning, eh? Huh? You know what we could have done? We could just be Stadamosa Dadanea, preaching, going after it. Baby cries, send the baby out. Baby has to then go live in his misery, right? Baby doesn't get missed to. Baby is just as important as, a, as, a, as an adult. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ah, right now, I'm preaching to see results. I'm preaching to see a manifestation of some sort. 
Either you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, fall down on the floor, foaming at the mouth, or start screaming something, crying something. Something. Some reaction to the presence and power of God because that's what the presence and power of God does. It produces reaction. It produces action. It produces movement. It produces going forth. It produces ability, power, authority. It produces change. Change. Hallelujah. I, one day, I mean, this isn't for everybody because you're going to have to grow in faith. But one day I was telling my wife, I said, baby, you're going to have to go to the hospital and I want you to go get a checkup. I want you to she said, I'm not going to the hospital. I'm getting a checkup. Jesus Christ is my healer. I said, it ain't going to hurt. I mean, it's just that much more of a testimony. You know, you go in there and they give you this clean bill of health and tell you how healthy you are. I'm not going. Period. Uh, but how about obeying your husbands? I'm obeying God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, come on. Listen, because ultimately we come to a place of resolve. There is no fear there. There is no concern there. And it's a wonderful place to move past the fear, to move past the concern. But what happens if you live oppressed by it every day and you don't know how to get out of it and it's constantly harassing you and it's constantly tormenting you and it's constantly intimidating you? You're going to have to get down on your knees and get yourself some authority to run off all those things that are, that are messing with you so that you can now move on in God and have an, a divine ability by the Spirit of the living God to pull down strongholds and cast down imaginations that would mess with you. And there's a big battle going on right there. But, you know, I know where the Lord's taking every one of you. He's taking every one of you to a place where you rule and reign with Him for a thousand years. I said He's taking you to a place to rule and reign with Him. I, you can't even imagine what you're about ready to do. You can't even imagine what you're going to step into. Ah! You can't even imagine the glory that's about to be revealed in your life. You can't even imagine. You can't even imagine the glory that's about to unfold upon your life. You can't even begin to imagine it. You can't even begin to consider it. And Father's purpose is that we take a hold of it right now and begin to live for it, see it, feel it, sense it. His purpose that you and I begin to reign with him right now. Ha, ha, ha. Prusatai. It's happening. I'll tell you right now. It's happening. Everywhere we go, there is the opportunity of the empowerment of the Father to step into the will of the Father. And there's also the great struggle of Satan's lies and intimidation to stop us. Saying, no, you cannot. As soon as soon as soon as a person gets enough an anointing to begin to function in the Holy Spirit, Satan will come out with whatever will work against you and he will tailor make his attack for wherever he can access you to stop you. You're going to have to be equipped. First of all, to recognize his lie and to bind it in the name of Jesus Christ and get your heart and your affections set upon that which God has called you to be in him. Recognize that you're not supposed to be of this world in any dimension. You're not supposed to depend upon men's system to get God's job done. Let me say it again. You should not supposed to, you're not supposed to depend upon God's system to get God, to, uh, the world system to get God's job done. Let me say it again, I'll do a better job. You're not supposed to depend upon the world system to, to get the things that God has purposed for you to do, accomplish, done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You walk by faith, not by sight. I said you walk by faith, not by sight. There is a spiritual realm. There is a spiritual realm that has nothing to do with the sense realm. If you are going to continually every day give yourself to thinking it through and figuring it out, God don't work in a mind realm. In that sense, he don't work in the intellectual realm. He is going to have to stop. Because it works counter to faith. Father wants to teach you to hear the Spirit and move by the Spirit and obey the Holy Ghost. 
And he's expecting that you and I go ahead and keep his charge and do what he's commanded us to do to start off with, the simple things he's told us to do, to live by faith and walk by faith and not by sight, to say, look, you know, there's a spiritual dimension of me that I don't know really much about. It's the real me. You're going to be shocked with yourself one day. When you, when you, when you depart from this body, you're going to go, wow, this is me. My goodness, look at me. I hope you're looking good. <laughs> There's a spiritual you that God has purposed for you to live by and walk by and move in, which is what the Holy Spirit is communicating with. It's through, the whole, it's through this new spirit that God has given to us, this new heart and this new spirit, that the Holy Spirit functions. Huh? Huh? Your intellect has been moved from here down to here. <laughs> Hallelujah. It comes out of you like a, like a river. It, many times, it's contrary to what you know. It's opposite to what you know. It really is. It's opposite to what you know. I've been shocked by the Lord many times. One, one particular time that I like to make reference to because I think it's a great contrast. I saw this preacher, and I thought he was flaky, and I thought he was weird, and he had major problems. And I didn't like him. And I was having a hard time even showing him a good attitude. And I'm flowing in the Holy Ghost preaching. And out of my belly begin to, this word of heaven, begin to prophesy to this man. And the glory of God begin to describe to him those things that he was about to do and what God was going to release in his life. And my head is going, it can't be him. And the Spirit of the Lord saying, oh, yes, it is. He is my anointed servant that I've appointed at this time to do these things. It's true. It's beautiful, man, when you discover that realm. Hallelujah. Where you now start walking by faith and not by sight. Faith realm is a spirit realm. It's the Holy Ghost now leading you, guiding you, and teaching you, and telling you what to do instead of you telling Him what to do. God, the Holy Ghost, don't need your help in figuring nothing out. Two heads are not better than one in this particular instance. Amen. Uh, one head's off is going to work properly. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Helps me. Helps me. Helps me to move out of my rational thinking, to move out of my understanding, to move out of the way that I speak and the way that I think, to now functioning in another realm. I was asking the Lord one day, I said, Lord, why didn't little baby Anna immediately get healed of that heart problem? Because, Lord, you know that there was a time clock on it. They had put so much pressure on Ali and Joshua. Why didn't it happen? And the Spirit of the Lord said, you need to build yourself up more in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. I said, Lord, why, don't, why didn't I have a greater anointing? He said, you need to build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You need to give yourself more to the things of the Spirit. You, give, you, 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 you still haven't fully given yourself over full time to the things of the Spirit. Boy, I tell you right now, when I heard that from heaven, I was actually on my way to Oregon, and so I had 11 hours to... I was with a very uh, famous minister and, and God has used this, this particular person in an, an incredible way and, um, and, and I don't want to mention names and I just feel the Lord told me to stop name dropping as it were but you know he was telling me about some, a great crisis that he went through and he tell, told me about what the Lord has showed him. The Lord began to talk to him about faith and where that faith was being mingled with a confidence in what men was doing. And he said that the only way, the Lord said the only way he was going to get out of the mixture, because pressure was on him to put the, put the mixture on it. And it, this, is a, this is a person, this is part of raising up one of the greatest churches and movements in America now. And he, and he said, when, he said the pressure came on me, and, and, and I knew I had authority in God to deal with this thing, but there was pressure on the other side to mix it with medical science, and I knew that it was going to be a breach. But I consented to it, and the mixture produced the wrong result. 
He said, but God showed me through the thing. He showed me how that I had dominion and authority over the intimidation and threat if I would just begin to give myself to praying in the Holy Ghost. He said, I really didn't understand a whole lot about faith, even though he's a, a part of an, a, Pente a great Pentecostal denomination. He said, I never, really had, I never really understood much about faith. He said, but when I got in the press, I decided to give myself to learning everything about faith, reading everything about faith, listening to every ministry about faith, or laying hold on everybody that knew anything about faith and did something with it till faith is a reality in my life. You see, that's what makes the difference between those who have an increase in the anointing in their life, an increase in faith, and those who just sit around complaining and murmuring and saying, well, nothing's been happening. I've been at this for so long and been doing so much and I ain't got nothing because you're stupid. Because I always hear an overtone, and I'm just going to get rid of radical with it. I always hear an overtone like it's God's fault or somebody else is doing something wrong around here. No, it's you. The problem, sir, or miss, lies at your door. Ha! If, you got, if, it's, if it's happening to you in your life, guess what? It's you. It ain't me. Because it ain't happening in my life, so don't put it on me over here. You know, are, you, are you with me? And it ain't God's fault, so don't put it on him because he's given everybody liberally and withheld nothing from anyone who asks. It's his idea. He commissioned us to do this. He's, it's his idea. It's his idea for you to move in faith in such a way that mountains must obey you, the wind and waves must obey you, that the sun and moon must obey you, that finances must obey you, that sickness and disease must obey you, that Satan must obey you, that demon spirits must hearken to your voice. Hallelujah. <laughs> I hurt myself out at the ranch the other day and about a, a, a tore my muscle and about a, a foot long of muscle swollen up. I took my, you know, I had my pants off. I don't want to get too graphic. And uh, my wife saw it. She ran me down, got her hand on that thing. In Jesus' name. Every bit of swelling, swelling and pain out. In Jesus' name. Come on, man. Come on now. Come on now. I'm glad somebody's going to get radical around here. Hallelujah. Huh? I just basically said, thank you, Jesus, and ignored it. I'm going to sit there and babysit it. Oh, I grew up in my bobo. I outgrew that a long time ago, man. Come on. Ha, ha. Praise God. But thank God for the people around you not going to allow any pain to be there. I'm not going to allow any sickness or disease to be there. Come on, baby. You just got to rise up in faith and get radical with the thing. Huh? I don't want sympathy. I want a prayer of faith, please. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to feel sorry for me. I want you to rise up in authority and tell, tell me how it's going to be according to God's word and the way he settled it out. God wants you to keep his charge. God wants you to keep his charge. He wants you to cast out devils, lay hands on the sick. God wants you to keep his charge. He wants you to go everywhere and raise the dead and command the blind to see, the deaf to hear. But I'm intimidated. What if I pray for them? Jesus is going to get a bad reputation. No, you're going to get a bad reputation. <laughs> if I pray for them, tell them they're going to be healed. They don't get healed. It's going to somehow infect their faith. No, it ain't. It's going to increase yours. <laughs> Quit letting this, the powers of darkness spin cast everything for you so that you believe a lie and are damned or be a lie, believe a lie and are hindered. Start believing the truth. Do what God says to do and quit adding to it and taking from it. There's more people adding to the word, taking from the word than, I, than you could even begin to imagine here tonight. And we get all religious with it and, you know, we want to talk about, you know, which translation. Give me a break. <laughs> It ain't even about that. It's about how you're living the Word of God. It's about how you're adding to the Word of God in your life. It's about how you're taking away from the Word of God in your life. Not about which translation sit around a table and argue through an intellectual realm. My goodness, what a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> Big, uh, people, I mean, just want to sit and say, I oh, will say to you, really, ah, uh, he was lying when he told Jesus he had all the power. Hey, look around, buddy. It certainly seems like Satan got a whole lot of power, and all you're doing is sitting there intellectualizing about it. It's time you get a hold of authority. Go now and, and do what you say you believe. If Satan was a liar and was lying, 
and it's not true, then you go and enforce God's word right now. And let's see nations subdued. Let's see the financial kingdom turned upside down, delivered over into the hands of God's people. Hallelujah. If one woman full of the devil can take prayer out of schools, where is the one woman full of the faith of God that can put it back in? So who's bigger? Her God or your God? Somebody's going to know where they stand with God. Somebody's going to know their place before him. And they're going to call for fire from heaven. They're going to have a contest and they're going to say, let God who answers by fire, let him be God. Let the God who I know will listen and hearken to my voice, let him be God. Huh? I'm telling you right now, I'm in that mix right now. I'm feeling it. I'm here preaching to you tonight. I'm here building you up with his word, hallelujah, that you might step into your inheritance that he's given to all the saints that are walking with him. So you just go ahead and be what Jesus made you to be and you quit being what men have made you to be. You quit being what you believed yourself to be and you start believing what he described you and declared you to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you to rise up. I command you to rise up into the harvest. I command you to rise up with power and authority. I command you to rise up with healing in your wings. I command you to rise up in the anointing that Jesus Christ has given. I can't command you to rise up with a wellspring in your heart, with a day star in your heart and a wellspring in your belly. In Jesus' mighty name, I command you to rise up with the word of life and the word of authority to go forth and to conquer and to subdue. I command you to rise up with the word of faith. I command you to rise up with the prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Threatening bills come along, and we have threatening bills piled up. Goodness gracious. And Satan says, bow. Bow to those bills. You can't do what God said to do. Bow to those bills. I just laugh. I laugh at the bills. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I just say, let's just watch what God will do. There's a lot of people that don't even know it. See, for me, I've grown and matured enough that I can hear the voices of it. I can recognize the voice of the enemy because I first and foremost recognize the voice of God. I've recognized the voice of the Holy Ghost. I've learned to recognize the voice of the Holy Ghost because I gave myself to listening to the way that he talks by reading his word. I've come to know his word. Somebody sent me something the other day they wanted me to evaluate. I told them right away, I said, I am listening to the very mind of Satan. I am listening to the very words of darkness in this thing that you sent to me. And they said, well, I want to publish it. I said, go ahead and publish it and call it, entitle it, The Mind of Satan. People need to get a hold of it. And then Brady wrote back and said, good title. <laughs> because he understood it too. I, I recognize these things because I know the voice of God. I've learned the voice of God right here by the word. And so when I hear these threatening, lying, accusing, intimidating things where Satan is demanding me to, sub, to bow to his will, to come under his pressure, ain't no way. Because it will stop faith. As soon as I do, as soon as I begin to move or adjust things whatsoever in any way to that intimidation, to that fear, faith stops. And you pray all you want, nothing's going to happen until you move in faith and stop moving in the fear and the doubt and the intimidation and the lie and the threats. Dear people, you want to walk by faith and not by sight. You want to give yourself to the Word of God and to the ways of the Spirit. So you can begin to identify those things that have constantly been tripping you up. They've constantly been influencing your decisions. They've constantly been threatening you and you've lived by their dictates and rules. Just as Israel did when they were oppressed by the Philistines or the Amalekites or anyone else. It's time to be a deliverer in your life. His name is Jesus. God has raised up a mighty deliverer. Hallelujah. Who has come to deliver his people from all those who would oppress them. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. I'm talking about you turning everything around this very day that will begin to have immediate fruit and it won't take long in the very near future as you begin to live by His Word instead of imaginations 
And imaginations are the worst of all things because they are the creation of your mind hooked up with the satanic lies and fearful uh, threats that, of, of things that don't even exist. And so now you're truly living under the authority of something that doesn't even exist. It's not even real. People, it's time, it's time that you, you learn how to recognize the call of God upon your life that you are to live by the word. You are to live uh, by this trust that you have in God, this confidence that he's going to provide all that you have need of according to his riches and glory, this confidence that you can do all things by Christ Jesus who strengthens you. <laughs> To, that it then becomes more powerful and more influential to you than all of the fears and all the threats that have contaminated your decision and you didn't even know that it was a part of your decision-making process because you're unaware of it. But tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, I break off that power of darkness and that influence from off of you so that you can be of sober and sound mind to recognize where you've been making decisions based upon finances. You've been making decisions based upon your human ability. You've been making decisions based upon how you see yourself from a mere human standpoint rather than making decisions on those things which God has declared and who's faithful and will do what he's promised that he would do. You're going to have to learn how to laugh. You have to learn how to say things like, let's watch what God will do and get comforted by it when all the bills are piled up and threatening you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was sitting in a room one day with the guy who had the, he had the mortgage on the other property. And they lost no money. They gained money from us. And he was sitting across the room and, you know, he was asking me why we were late on paying our bills. And I said, well, you know, we've just... We, we've got things that we're having to manage. Your ministry's coming in. And, and, you know, we're going here and there and doing ministry. Oh, you can't afford to do that. I was ready to stand up and tell him, listen, to, listen, listen, Satan. <laughs> the Lord refrained me. He refrained me. He refrained me. But that's just the way it is. I know those threats. Some of you say, well, that's just common. That's ordinary. That's sensible. You can excuse Satan's lying uh, ways if you want, but I'm going to call it what it is and rebuke it and cast it out and say you have no place over here in this realm of faith. Huh. Nobody's going to miss out on anything. They didn't miss out on anything. Huh? Oh, praise God. God used a situation to get them to quit basically charging us 9, 10% interest and bring it back into a realm that was reasonable around 3, 4%. Amen. Amen. Which they should have been doing all along. Are you with me? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are not going to receive your reward in heaven based upon your credit score. The Lord's got it. You got a good credit score. I tell you right now, I'm gonna make you ruler over many nations. Look at you, so responsible. <laughs> no, he's gonna get you up, and moving, and conquering, and subduing. Nation. So I said, oh, we need to have, we need to have a, a uprightness and integrity before men. Fine, but you need to first have an uprightness and integrity before God. First, before God. And if you're in default against God, somebody needs to sort you out while you upholding your position before men. Listen to me. Hallelujah. You want to be in favor with God first, then you'll be in favor with men next. Huh? I, am I breaking off the yoke? Am I breaking off the yoke? I pray God in Jesus' name, I'm breaking off the yoke. I pray I'm shining a floodlight on every trick of Satan in the name of Jesus. That would hold you back because faith means you risk everything. You lay down your life. You, you love not your life even under the death. I'm telling you, you've got to come to that point with everything about your life. And when you are willing to lay down your life, when you're willing to say, over my dead body, 
then you'll risk everything else. Huh? You'll risk it all to go do what God said, commissioned us to do. Listen to this. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 7. Lord said, Thus says the Lord of hosts. Oh. Thus says the one who's in charge of everything and has all power to arrange it according to his divine will. And nothing can withstand his will. What he has decreed must be. It is absolute sovereignty. It will not change. It will not be moved forever it will not be moved forever thus says the lord of hosts it will not be moved forever thus says the lord of hosts when it comes out that way when god has said something you can understand it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for what god has promised you to come up short people want to just sit around and dogmatize and argue about once again which translation we talking about what you're living we're talking about what God's commissioned you to do and what you're living are you listening to me yeah. <laughs> somebody said to me the other day well pastor mark what do you think about this translation I said, just give me somebody moving in faith. Forget about it. Forget about it. Don't, for, don't ask me about another translation. I just want to see the faith thereof. I just want to see the ministry of Jesus. I just want to see the power of God. When I was a child, I thought like a child and argued like one. I've grown up since then. I just want Jesus and the power of heaven to be manifested. I want the word of God to be revealed. I want signs and wonders. I want the manifestation of the one who destroys the power of the devil, the fruit of the word, the life of the word. The value of the word, the meaning of the word, the expression of it, the revelation of it, the definition of it, the supernatural working of it. There's been more people who've done more things in the kingdom of God who had less Bible than anybody in the Western world. In third world countries like China, one page of the Bible. Other nations, they grabbed all the faith of the word. The power of the word, the life of the word, the God of the word. When you've got the God of the word, people, mm -mm -mm. when you know where you stand with him, when you've, found a pl when you've discovered your place with him, you've received the commission directly from him and his charge, that encounter will result in you doing it. I'm telling you, on the day of Pentecost, before the day of Pentecost, they were in the upper room. They were threatened. They were fearful. They were intimidated. They were uncertain. It wasn't clear to them how things were going to develop within the kingdom of God, within the context of their lives as they related to Jesus and his ministry. The things just, the dots were not connected. What he said that they would do and where they were at at that moment just didn't line up. But when the Holy Ghost came upon them on the day of Pentecost, all in the manasitea, all in the masikerata, all intimidation, all fear, all uncertainties were totally removed. And in a laughing, glorious, joyful, Holy Ghost state of ecstasy, they staggered out into the street declaring the good things and the wonderful works of Jesus Christ as they spoke with the languages of the Spirit. Three, those people of that city that day seeing such glory manifested on those who should be fearful and intimidated because they threatened out here boldly speaking in the name of Jesus with such glory upon their life. 3,000 came into the kingdom that day. They didn't hand out flyers. Didn't have a special event. They weren't giving away a new iPad. Oh, <laughs> God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were pressing in. Mungutaya. They were pressing in. They were risking everything to be there. And now the power of God was released through their life. And they were just having a good time. 
There was no pressure on them. There was no pressure there. God had taken full control of the situation. <laughs> Watch what's going to happen. Watch. You might be watching, wa walking by sight and feeling real bad. I'm walking by faith and feeling real glad. <laughs> you might be walking by sight and, 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 and feel threatened and, 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 and concerned and worried on whether anything's ever going to change. I'm walking by faith and I hear the sound of a rushing mighty wind. <laughs> I hear the sound of heaven. I, I, I hear the sound of the, of the marching, the trumping of the foot as God raises up a great and mighty army who will stand in his behalf and stand in his place. And everywhere Satan is encountered, they destroy the power of the enemy. They destroy the power of wickedness. They destroy the power of torment. They destroy the power of death and disease and sickness. And every plague that would, that would afflict men's lives. This is what God's doing in these last days. He's got a glorious event that's going to happen before the wrath of the Lamb comes. Mm, hallelujah. hallelujah. Next, not this Friday, but a week from this Friday, we're going to have a school of the Spirit. You know, we just, I've been doing the school of the Spirit in another way <laughs> because I've been off and running. In fact, what we're going to do is, rather than do the school of the Spirit, we're going to actually do another portion in the book of Revelation because the Lord really laid it upon my heart to minister on end time prophecy. And he just stirred me so with these things. As we see these days approaching, it's very important for God's people to understand what's going on around them. <clears throat> Lest they should be taken, you know, by the deception, the craft of the enemy, and, and just be taken and confused by wrong uh, notions and, and ideas about what's taking place. So that, that would be the, what would that, what's that week? I don't even know what that week is right now, but a week from this Friday. And I just got to tell you now because I'm going to forget. I say it when I'm thinking of it. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 7. <clears throat> Thus says the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. I hear him talking. That's why I get so excited. I hear Papa saying something. I hear a commission from heaven. It hasn't passed away. It's not gotten old. It's not just for Josiah. It's not just for Joshua, son of Jezedek. It's for you and me right now. He says this. He says, if you will walk in my ways, if you will keep my charge, and I, I really want to emphasize walking in the way of the Lord. Jesus showed us how to walk. I don't want you to get, you, I don't want you to get in the concept of walking in the ways of the Lord and it's just purely you know, based upon Old Testament ideas of walking in the ways of the Lord. I want you to get a New Testament idea of walking in the ways of the Lord. The well, New Testament idea of walking in the ways of the Lord is walking in the footsteps of Jesus, walking the life of Jesus Christ, following Jesus. If you walk in my ways, if you keep my charge, in other words, I've given you a commission, I've given you an assignment. How many people in here, you know you've been given an assignment? I hope every one of you know what your assignment is because this is a part for you being able to find your place. There is, a, there is absolutely an essential application of your life for you to be able to find your place in God, for you to grow in a relationship, to grow in the anointing, to grow in faith. Relationship demands first and foremost that you and I be obedient servants to the Lord Jesus Christ, that we learn to be obedient servants of the Holy Spirit. It says, if you'll walk in my ways, if you'll keep my charge, if you will do, if you will, if he says, then thou shalt also judge my house and you shall keep my courts, and I will give you a place to walk among these that stand around me here, that stand by me. I want you to believe tonight that that commission, when you look over here in Matthew chapter 17, is something that is given to you even on a higher level. <laughs> In representing the Lord. Just look at this real quickly. Look with me at Matthew chapter uh, 17, verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, They said, Why couldn't we cast out the devil? The Lord's there keeping his charge. They're going, doing what he walking in his ways, doing what he has commissioned them to go do. Go preach the gospel. Preaching the gospel without power is not preaching the gospel. I'm going to say it again. Preaching the gospel without power is not preaching the gospel. 
If you just open up your mouth with some kind of intimidated, fearful, you know, human-to-human -human notion, ain't nothing going to happen. But when you stand in front of someone and you have an authority and you carry an authority in your, in your bosom mm -hmm. and you're looking at them saying, I'm here to set you free. Mm -hmm. And you come, to, you come to them as Christ Jesus comes to them instead of as a man comes to them or a woman comes to them. It's an entirely different realm. This is what God's called us to do. And, uh, and, and here the disciples are keeping his commission, keeping his charge. They go to cast out this devil. And the, ultimately what's happening is they get into a mental activity because of their discussions that were taking place because of this rebellious stronghold that was in this child. The demon power of darkness was not willing to listen. And instead of them keeping with the charge, they allowed, uh, you know, uh, the, the Pharisees, and they allowed the scribes to step in and start helping and sort it out. Listen, when I'm tell you right now, I've had an experience like this before. I know what you're going through. Look at the moon. You know, right now, this is a particular time, unique time to try to do this. You need to wait till tomorrow. Because they were having it all based upon their ritual and their ideas. And Jesus was angry about it. He said, what are you doing talking to discussing this issue with them? They didn't know anything. All you're doing is you're shutting down faith. As they begin to mix it with the, if they, as they begin to mix the word of God and the commission of the Lord Jesus Christ with the mind of men, it shut down faith and unbelief was all that was left. So they said, why couldn't we cast out the devil? Jesus said, because you unbelief. He had sent them. He had given them authority to go and do it. They had been having many successes in doing it. They happened to get in this situation where now there's a mixture coming at them. I want you to watch out there, people, because you're mixing stuff up with the word of God in your own mind, your own intellect, and your own reasoning. God's not interested in our mind, our intellect, and our reason. He's interested in us keeping his charge, keeping his commission. And, and <clears throat> so he said unto them, because of your unbelief, he said, look, get rid of the mixture. Are you listening to me? Yes. Get rid of the mixture. Get rid of all the human expression, all the human idea, and all the human reasoning. And you can say to this mountain, be removed and cast in the sea, and everything that you believe will come to pass if you just believe in your heart. Now, think about believing in your heart. I want, I want to just grab a hold of this real quickly, and then, you know, we're going to see what else the Lord would do here just to strengthen you and help you. But he says, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, remove hence and to uh, the other place over there, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. So I just want to say this, if you have the smallest little bit of faith and you don't allow it to be, to mi be mixed with human reasoning, nothing should be impossible to you. Let me just say it again. Can I say it again? If you have the smallest little bit of faith and you don't allow it to be mixed with any kind of human reasoning at all, nothing should be impossible to you. I'm going to say it one more time over here. Listen, if you have the smallest little bit of faith, if you have the smallest little bit of faith, sometimes people get hung up on the mountain. Don't get hung up on the mountain. Get hung up on the fact that nothing's impossible for you, okay? Get hung up on that nothing's impossible for you. Get hung up on, get, get hung up, get hung up on this. Get hung up on this. Don't add to God's word. Get hung up on this. Don't take away from his word. Get, get settled in this, that God is faithful concerning all of his promises. He is a man of faith. He is a God of faithfulness. He is a God of uprightness. He's a God of integrity. He's a God that cannot lie. He's a God that is faithful to perform all that he's promised. Not the smallest little bit of faith. If you have the smallest little bit of faith and you quit, you quit mixing it with mental, mental assent, you quit, quit mixing it with human reasoning, nothing should be impossible for you. I want you to understand that to be the context. And, and ultimately, he's going, to bring, he, he's going to bring about something here in, in Mark chapter 11 that I want you to look at for just a minute. I want you to see a passion within the context of what Jesus is saying in Mark chapter 11. And I want you to get passionate about these things in Jesus' mighty name. I want you to get determined about these things. In other words, I want, you to, I want you to be so consecrated and so committed to it that you're not going to allow anything else to exist. You won't have it any other way. This is the way it's going to be. Forget about it. Huh? Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. See Paul on Gaza, Bola Manda Yeshe. Papa's going. Papa's commanded. Papa's demanded great things upon your life. Father's commissioned great things for your life. 
Father's commission, signs, wonders, miracles, authority beyond your wildest imagination. He's commissioned it for you. It's yours. It's yours right now. It belongs to you. He's filled your heart with it. He's written it upon the tables of your heart. He's put it in your mind. So that you'll do it, so that you'll keep it, so that you'll understand that He is, that He exists, that He's here right now. And that, and that anybody who seeks Him and anybody who walks with Him, anybody who will give their life over to Him, He will reward them with all of these things belonging to the promotion that only God can give to men. Hallelujah. The greatness that God can give to men. There's nothing greater than to be crowned with His anointing. Elijah was the greatest man of his generation. He was greater than all kings. Hallelujah greater than all the mighty men that lived in his day because he knew his place with God because he stood before God and he's even described as standing before God as one of God's candlesticks, one of God's lights to the earth. One of God's lights lit up by his glory, lit up by his anointing, lit up by his holy oil of life. My goodness, I want that. I'm going to go for that. Forget about everything else. The total abandonment, I'm going for that. I'm stripping everything off. I'm running for him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Everything that would hold me back is off. It's gone. I'm running for him. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, I'm having a bonfire. Anything that's, <laughs> anything that's holding me back, it's going up in smoke. Hallelujah. He's cast his mantle upon me. I'm not going to have any less response than Elisha did to Elijah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. One friend of mine recently said, these are not the days of Elijah. These are the days of you. But God has raised you up for now. These are, the these are the days where you and I individually get to find our life fully hid in Jesus Christ. Elijah found his life fully hid within the power of the mantle that had come upon him and the anointing and the appointment of God for his life. Today, you and I have been given a name. I mean, I, you even have a name in the Spirit. What they, you're, you're named literally by your deeds. Hallelujah. Kuribastea. Oh, mama Ha, ha. What is your name in the spirit? Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. La sambrukaya la. Mamba ramasiteya habukusha preka. Mama mande preteya. Hallelujah. Mamonda. I pray in Jesus' name that your name won't give it any rest. <laughs> Pressing in for more. Hallelujah. Ambrusade. And the manakisha poyara. Malandadeya pataya. Lu sabrinaya. You have a new name written down in glory right now. Hallelujah. Now, your life isn't about what you've done in this world. Your life isn't about your successes or your failures. In fact, success is a worse plague to you than your failures. It's easy for you to despise your failures. You'll cling to your successes and try to reproduce them. They'll be a prison for you. Failures can only be a prison for you because you ultimately come to a place of a such intimidation you lack any confidence and boldness to ever move forward. Mm -hmm. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray that you will take upon yourself a new identity and a new name that has been given to you in Christ Jesus and you begin to live fully for him. You'll stop living half for him or quarter for him or three quarters for him or 90% for him. I have one friend of mine who's very prophetic in the way he ministers, and he comes out sometimes in ministry singing the song, I surrender half. I surrender half. Half to you, Lord. Half to me. I surrender half. But the fact of it is, is it's so true. And so you're stuck there. You're stuck. He loves you. His mercy's there toward you. His goodness is there toward you. You'll feel His touch. You'll feel His presence. You'll feel His grace. But you'll never step into your place until it's all for Him. Until your life in total abandonment saves this day. You come to the altar, and on this altar you offer yourself a living sacrifice, and you vow yourself when you come up here. And we're privileged to lay hands upon you and to be used by God to see things that we have received and parted into your life. And then God goes even beyond that which we've received. We've received and even gives you more because Jesus' ministry is hooked up with it. But then there has to be the walking out of it. 
you have to walk it out. You came and you offered yourself on the altar of sacrifice and the fire of God came. But then there is that commitment to now go and live it and go and do it with total abandonment. To come up against those points of, as it were, of a crossroad before where you chose your own life. But this time to say goodbye to yourself, to live only for Jesus, to make decisions based upon that which God demands rather than that which your self-preservation demands. In Mark chapter 11, the Lord talks to us about putting a heart into this. And he says, he says it in such a radical way. And, and I want you to understand that verse 22 literally does say, and Jesus answered them and said, have God's faith. Have the kind of faith that God has. In other words, have the kind of supernatural working power of divine authority that God has. I know some theologians don't like this because they don't want to believe that God has faith. But God does have faith. It's a fruit of God. <laughs> because God is the Holy Spirit and one of His fruits and evidence is faith. Hallelujah. Oh, He gives it to us. It belongs to Him. Just like His love. Amen. Amen. <laughs> have God's faith. My goodness, what empowerment. Don't be threatened by that. Don't feel overwhelmed by that. Don't feel like, oh my goodness, God is expecting us. The pastor expects us to do things that I mean, my goodness gracious, what, who, what kind of a dream is he living in? Doesn't he realize? No, 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 no. I'm casting for you the lofty vision of divine inheritance that has been already deposited into your account. And all I'm saying is now rise up, rise up from the place that you're living and now step into this place where you've been seated together with him in the heavenly realm. Step over here into the light and now say, Father, it's your idea. You said to do it, so here we go. Hallelujah. <laughs> Throw caution to the wind and get her done. Amazikali. Alamangadaya. Hallelujah. You realize that you carry this anointing, that you have this mantle, that forget about what the thinking realm goes on, that goes on inside of you with the threats that would be there. Yeah, you know, there's times I walk up to people and I say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I set you free right now. And I hear every voice saying, you don't have the power, they're not ready, and all the other nonsense. I, I have learned to pay no attention. I listen not to the threats. I do not bow to his music, to his threats, to his life. When he says, unless you bow to me, you will be destroyed. I'll throw you in a fiery furnace. I've learned how to not listen. I will not allow his voice, his lies, his threats, his intimidation to any way mix within my thinking at all. I stand in the authority and the commission and the charge which is given me in Christ Jesus and I command Satan and it cannot be any other way. Now, do it. Begin to do it. Begin to live it. Begin to be it. Let the personification of it be a reality in your life and watch how faith will grow. Watch how the anointing will increase as you give yourself to such boldness in the faith. Mm -hmm. uh, as you give yourself to such an expression of the anointing that you have already been baptized in and some of you pickled. <laughs> huh? And it's now time for you to start flowing in Jesus' name. Yeah. It's now for you to start, stop questioning and stop reasoning and stop wondering and get yourself a resurrection revelation and start shouting, having touched him, having handled him with your hands, having seen him with your eyes, having a spirit of wisdom and revelation that causes you now to go everywhere doing what he did. Hallelujah. 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 I total sigh. I should not come the least bit behind in any of the gifts because I've set myself to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've been made an able minister of the gospel. Hallelujah. Because I set myself to it. Hallelujah. I'm on Mokoshi Karatai. I say these things only to say to you, there is no difference between you and me. God has made this available to all. 
He's given liberally to anyone who asks. It's the commission of the sons of God. We all equal there. Father gives us different diverse anointings and different diverse opportunities, but nonetheless, the same divine power and authority, no matter male nor female, no matter bond nor free, no matter Jew, the most consecrated, or Scythian, the most unconsecrated. Every single human being called to live out the very life of Christ and the revelation of his divine glory. What a wonder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And every time you preach, preaching will become more powerful. And every time you witness, witnessing will become more powerful. And every time you lay hands on the sick, the laying on of hands will be more powerful. And every time you say to the Satan, go, the power, the authority will become more powerful. Because as you give yourself to these things, they increase. As you give yourself to these things, you are strengthened. The authority of heaven becomes more active and activated in your life. Because this is where faith grows. To go and do it. The disciples would have never, ever begun to have the development of the anointing, having a manifestation of the power and glory of God in their life, if they would have just watched Jesus all the time. So Jesus sent them apart and go do it. Sent them out two by two. I'm praising God for the second one that was sent with me. The Lord gave me a great second. She's first, I'm second. And then sometimes I'm first and she's second. I try to get her to be first tonight, but she says, well, I'm just tired. What did you say? You said you wanted to sit and listen to me. I, fed you, I, I translated that as I'm tired. Because I, like, I love to listen to the anointing and the Holy Ghost being stressed through her. Don't you? A couple of people do. <laughs> Leslie and Nikki. I saw a couple of other people smile and a few others nod. And others just couldn't hear what I said. We're going to let that go. (laughs) Have God's faith. Okay. Just say okay. Okay. Have God's faith. Jesus says to you, have God's faith. It's easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one word to not be fulfilled. So he just simply said, have God's faith. I empower you to have it right now. That's what he's saying. He said, I give it to you. Have it. Have it. Take it. Take it. (laughs) He says, this is a bottle. Take it. He says, take it. He says, have it. I give it to you. Freely. So just reach out there and grab a hold of it. Now what are you going to stand? What are you going to do with it? Stand there and hold it? Stand there and look at it? Put it on the shelf as a trophy? Huh? Invite people over to dinner so they can look at it? What are you going to do? Nambaga jay se ride en casa. Ala baku yahara. Ha, dia. Start going doing with it what he showed us to do. Ha, ha. Ribasuti ritaya. Munumurusu numaya de pa. I pray God give you wisdom and insight now how to minister to people, how to deal with people. You walk up to people and say, look, what do you want changed in your life? If there's anything you'd like to have different in your life, what would it be? Come on now, get real with me. Talk to them like that. Come on, get real with me. Get real with people. Quit giving them a spiel and start giving them life. Just start talking heart to heart. Huh? Instead of head to head. Huh? Huh? Goats do it head to head. Are you with me? You're not a goat. You sheep. You a lamb. Amen. Start heart to heart ministry in Jesus' name. Start looking at people. What would you have changed? And when you're asking them, you already ready, you fully ready, commissioned with a divine ability to give to them and command whatever change they want in their life to come. That change comes to you right now. The most important change is for you to have a new heart and a new spirit. And thus says the Lord, He gives you a new heart and a new spirit right now. He commands you to your whole life to change and come under His divine power and His glory. They might be saying, hold up, wait a minute, wait a minute, it's too late. Come on now, come on now. If I have a heavenly vision that, and I truly have bought in, I believe I can turn people in the power of Satan and the power of God, then it's too late. Because I'm already doing the turning. Ha! If I believe that I can set them free from the prison, too late. I've already opened up the door. I've already pulled you out. Too late. Too late. This is the faith that wins souls. 
be too intimidated. You live in an intimidated culture. You live in a time where Satan's threats are so vocal, telling you you can't pray, you can't speak in the name of Jesus, you can't declare to people anything uh, uh, about what God demands and impose your beliefs upon others. Nonsense. Satan, you a liar. I'm dealing not with anything but the one who's behind the scenes. Forget about the humanism. Forget about the puppets on his string. I'm not listening to men nor regarding their person. I know whose voice that is. I know whose mind that is. And I will not bow to his will. I do not have to listen to a single thing he has to say. In fact, I'm here to destroy every one of his works. I'm here to destroy every one of his works. Because you and I, to you, for you and I to live as Jesus, wherever Jesus is revealed, wherever he's manifested, Satan is destroyed. He was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Wherever Jesus is manifested, Satan's works are destroyed. You rise up now. Don't you be threatened no more. Now I want you to hear this. I want you to hear the passion of this faith. For verily I say unto you, whatsoever you whosoever shall say unto this mountain, once again, faith being about nothing being impossible for you, who shall ever say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. And I'm going to tell you people what you desperately want, what you want to exist, what you want to have, what you want to, be, to believe, what you want it, the way you want it to be. It's got to be that way because it's, you're full of passion about it. There's not going to be doubt. Just, passion will take care of the doubt. I'm going to say it again. Passion. It's got to be this way. We'll take care of the doubt. I will not allow it to be any other way. We'll take care of the doubt. Now, I do know that there is a struggle up front of this. I understand. And that's why you and I have received the weapons of our warfare, which are not carnal but mighty, which are not of any human or earthly origin, but are the powers of God, to begin to deal with all these threats that otherwise would keep you from the passion. The Word of God comes to us. And, you know, I, I, was just, I was just contemplating today, Spirit of the Lord talking to me about this passion of where Eli, Elisha comes to Joash. Elisha's about to die. And Joash comes and he's weeping because Elisha's about to die. And he's saying, Father, Father, we're going to be without a father. I'm going to be without a father. Here's the king. What's the king doing? The king is bowing to the man who's anointed and man who's found his place with God. Come on, people. There's not a higher position for you to live in than this Amen. position of sonship. Amen. He's weeping, Father, Father. And the old man gets up. He said, get one of your arrows out. Shoot the arrow out the window. And Joash is just kind of going along with him because he's father, you know, he's respecting and honoring the old man's about to die. Who knows? He might have thought he was starting to take a little leave of his senses. Shoot an arrow out the window. He says, Behold the deliverance of God to be delivered from the kingdom of Syria. He says, Takes the arrows. He said, Bind the arrows up and strike the ground with them. And Joash is just like, almost as, if, as though he's just trying to please the the old prophet. And he takes it and he just, you know, just kind of, just a couple of tap taps. And Elisha got, ex Elisha got upset. Why did you only strike three times? Why not five or six? Why didn't you get passionate about this, in other words? Why didn't you get after it? Why did you start thrashing the ground? For so early then, all your enemies should have been subdued. But now they, you will not be fully delivered from them. Because you only struck it three times, just to tap, tap, tap. He didn't really know what was going on. He came there to weep with the death of the, of the prophet. He didn't realize the prophet was going to give him the word of God. He wasn't ready for the word of God to bring to him a greater anointing, to give, give to him a greater power, to be a greater king in his day, to bring a greater deliverance to the people of God. He didn't understand that they, the word of God. He wasn't passionate about what he was hearing from heaven. Ah, 
Stoudemire. There's missing elements tonight of the, of the body of Christ here. There's people that are supposed to be here that are supposed to be in place actually doing things right now in the ministry as I'm speaking at this very moment. They've been taken out by a thing that continually takes them out. They've been removed out of place by threats and accusations of the enemy. I'm glad you're here, but you've got to find your place to be a part of this assembly to function and flow in what God would do right now to bring forth a greater manifestation of His glory when there is a part missing, there is lack. There is something that God would have done even on a greater scale. There are skill sets that need to be happening. The, the piano should be playing right now. There should be music. There should be the flowing of the anointing. There should be this, the, the sensitivity to know that that is supposed to be happening right now because I can actually hear it. I feel that it's that time. God wants to move upon your life. Sometimes it's very important. Music is very important when somebody is anointed to play the music. Because it's there in that context that sometimes people receive the word of God in a different, in a, in a very unique way. It's like the, you know, the same problem. Elisha said, bring me, a, bring me someone who's cunning on a, on a musical instrument. Then I should prophesy to you. I should deliver the word of the Lord to you. There's a place that God has for you. We want you to find your place among all those who are mighty in this generation who stand around him, who've been given anointings, who know who they are, who carry a divine ability to do the works of Jesus Christ. We want you to find your place. We want you to find your place. We want you to get out of the threats and the intimidation and the lies and the condemnation and the slander and the fear tactics of Satan. Get yourself free now. Shake yourself from these bands. Shake yourself from these bonds. Shake yourself from this yoke. Begin to live out this life in Jesus' name. I want everybody to stand with me. Somebody said, if I just understood how not to doubt in my heart, if I just understood how not to doubt in my heart, the Lord said, just keep my charge. And he said it in a similar way in 1 John. He said, you have confidence with God because your heart does not condemn you. Oh, when you're passionate about the things of God and whatever you ask, Father will do it. He's called you and I to step into a relationship with him. That Satan is so jealous about, he is ferocious about it. If he sees the anointing on you, you cannot have it. He will not allow it. He's jealous of it. He's envious of it. There's nothing that stirs him more than to see the anointing that will destroy him and destroy his yoke. An anointing that he once had. A realm and a place in God that is superior to his. Come on you or come on me. But there's nothing he can do about it to someone who will hide themselves in Jesus. Who will hide themselves in Jesus. When Elijah was ready to do something great, he hid himself in his mantle. He wrapped it around his head. Your mantle, my mantle is Christ Jesus. The power of the Holy Ghost has been given to us to hide. To hide. To hide. To hide yourself. To hide yourself away in Jesus. Is the commission that God has given today. Who will hear the voice of God? Who will hear the sound of heaven? Who will respond to that which he has said and done? Who will believe the word which is forever settled in heaven? A word that cannot pass away until it's all fulfilled. Who will believe what God has spoken and count and faithful to do what he's promised? Who will believe? To those who have believed, the arm of the Lord should be revealed unto them. Today, today, right now, today, right now, step into this calling. Today, right now, step into this calling. Today, right now, step into this anointing. Today, right now, step into this anointing. You have to turn out. Mama, 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 say that. Today, right now, step into this. 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 Today, let the Father raise you up. We can't hear you.
today, right now. Let the Father raise you up. Today, right now, let the Father raise you up. Let the Father raise you up. Arise and shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen on you. Today, believe what the Lord has spoken. Today, believe what God has said. Rise up and shine, for your light has come. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Just lift your hands towards heaven. There is a glory of heaven here now. The power of the Holy Ghost will come upon you and overwhelm you, settle upon your heart, your spirit, in such a way that you may understand and know that it's not you that speaks, but the spirit of your Father which speaks within you. It's not you that speaks or does these things which God has commissioned you to do, but the spirit of the Son which he's given you. It's not by your own might or by your own power, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord, it's by His anointing, it's by the Holy Ghost that has been given to you. Then no longer you will understand or regard yourself as mere men or after those things which you have the ability to do as a human being, as a mere human being. But now you do those things which God, the Holy Ghost, has commissioned you to do, having full confidence that what He said for you to do, if you'll keep His charge, you'll find and discover your place here standing among all those mighty ones who stand around him. This day in the name of Jesus Christ, I break off every torment and harassment in the name of Jesus. I commission you right now to take hold of the authority of God. I command you in Jesus' name to be strong in the strength of the Lord, the power of his might, that you may take unto yourself the whole armor of God so that you can stand against the wiles of Satan, no longer to be taken out by his lies, his threats, his fears, and his intimidation. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
In the name of Jesus. Oh, Rabasiki Primana. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you, Father, for your great anointing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your life that's given so freely. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord, we praise you. Father, we praise you. Lord, we bow before you. Lord, we yield ourselves unto your will. <laughs> Lord, to do your will, oh God, is what we will. <laughs> Father, your glory, your glory now, your glory now, your glory, your glory now. Your glory now. <laughs> your glory now, Lord. of your glory, Lord. Your signs and wonders. The working of your mighty power. Hallelujah. Woo! Your signs and wonders. Woo <laughs> the working of your mind, the power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your signs and wonders. Woo! <laughs> Woo! The word of your mighty power. Zorebebebebe yababolo yabom Zelalebe yabrebebe yolomongo Your signs and wonders Your glory now Your glory now, O oh God. Your glory now. Do it now, Lord. Do it now, Lord. Do it now, Lord. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now, do it now Lord. Do it now, have your way in me. Have your way in me. Have your way in me, Lord. Do it now, oh God. Do it now, Lord. Do it now, Lord. Do it now, Lord. Do it now, Lord. Do it now, right now. Things are happening right now. Things are moving around for those that would believe. For the slightest little bit of faith will result in everything being possible. There will be nothing impossible. 
Do it now. Do it now. Say, do it now. Get in your heart and get. Come. Come, I want to pray for you. Come. Yes. Come. Come. It's all right. It's all right. Somebody said, well, I tried a lot of things and it didn't work because it wasn't supposed to. Don't quit, don't quit we're praying because I, I, I don't have a piano player tonight. I need some worshipers. I need some worshipers. I need some worshipers. I need some people who found their place in God, won't stop praising, won't stop shouting, won't stop praying, won't stop reaching in, won't stop proclaiming, now, now in Jesus' name, now, do it now, do it now, Lord. changes right now Satan can harass you no more no more I break off his yoke his torment his lies his threats the pressure the stress no more you're released from it all you're released from it all right now Right now, you get to retire. So that you can be promoted into a new job. One in the kingdom, one serving God. Ha <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Unsailable. Everything changes right now. Everything comes into alignment and agreement with the Father, with the Lord Jesus, and with the Holy Spirit. Satan can lie to you no more. I stop every one of his works. He has to obey me now. Leave you alone. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> the Scots of God, would you come? Father says a whole new realm of faith. From dad to mom yeah. to Caleb to Joshi. <laughs> yeah, I see it, man. I see an anointing, a powerful anointing on you, Caleb. <laughs> Hallelujah. No more threats. No more lies. Satan can tell no more lies against you, no more lies to you. They won't work anymore. I promise you. Hallelujah. Yes. 
Hallelujah. 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 Kevin, the Kellys of the Spirit of the Lord, come. Come. Zoromai Yeshea, Tobiah. I heard Papa say, no more mixture tonight. You're not going to be robbed of the product and the, and the results of faith because you allowed a little bit of doubt or uncertainty to creep in. Father, in His grace, He is a gift to you tonight. Rasatai, received. Asdorosia, received, received. The fire and the power of the living God in Jesus' name. I say everything is different. I say the faith realm works. I say the authority of the Word. I say the authority of the Spirit. I say the authority of faith. In the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. The Word of God works in you. The brilliance that are going to make billions. Come here. The Lord says, the weapon that he's given to you is mighty. And that the strongholds of fear and intimidation will work no more against you in Jesus' name. No more in Jesus' name. Ah, ah the great boldness. Great boldness in the faith. Great boldness. Great boldness. Great boldness to do greater works. Great boldness. <laughs> Great boldness in the family. Great boldness. Hallelujah. Now, Father's doing it now. For every single person standing in here right now in this place, it's now. 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 Dwayne and Emily, I want you to come here. And I want Miles and Bonnie to come as well. They're the same situation. God wants to, God's got a breakthrough for them. Where's, Bile, where's Miles and Bonnie? Come. Why don't you come? You're going to find, you guys are going to take your place. You already know your place. You're going to take your place now. You girls, you're going to take your place now. You're going to take your place. The Lord says, walk before me. Walk in my ways. Keep my charge. Now this day, in the name of Jesus, the things that have tried to hinder you from walking before him and keeping your charge, his charge is going to stop. You're going to, get, you're going to get in charge so that you can keep his charge. Hallelujah. And I'm just talking to the girls right now only for a reason, because of, because of the anointing for music upon them and Satan trying to work against them. Look, listen, you've got to come and recognize that as soon as you've got an anointing that has any level of a threat, Satan's going to shut you down. And if you don't make up your mind that you're not going to be shut down, you are going to be certainly forever tripped up and shut down and not and held back. But tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, I say no more. 
I say no more. I said I no more Jesus name. In the mighty name of Jesus from this day forward, you take hold of your commission. You take hold of your commission. You take hold of your commission now. Yeah, amen. A little bit of excitement right now, a little bit of overwhelming situation, but it's going to be good. Everything's good, Bubba. We love you. We love you. We, your grandmother sends her love. She loves you. We love you. And we're just all excited. Don't worry. Hallelujah. Did you forget your shirt? Did you know you're supposed to bring a shirt to church? Now I'm just... Now I'm going to speak to Dwayne and Miles right now. Miles, get up. Come here. <laughs> Father, I thank you for such a sound of heaven, for such a shout of authority, for such a passion for you, for such a walk of faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, Dwayne, you listen to me. The things that have intimidated you or made you feel like, wait a minute, that's too much. That's a, too overwhelming. I don't know that I can go all that way. That power that has threatened you is broken right now. It's broken right now. It's broken right now. It's broken right now. It will never mess with you again, Dwayne. You count your life not dear unto yourself anymore. Nothing's valuable to you but this a commission. Nothing's value to, valuable to you but to this appointment. No longer, no longer. Will you be in, under any kind of threat by the powers of the enemy? I tell you, but you'll begin to now move in a consecration and a surrender of your life and an abandonment of your life that will release you into everything you've ever desired. Father, I thank you for this thunderous shout, the sound of heaven coming out this belly. I'll start a name, Rikaya. I'll sign life more, Jesus. Mirabus. I tell you, everything's changing right now. Listen to me. I, I, by the Spirit of the living God, have been commissioned tonight to break off this yoke. Not waiting around for anything else, but to break off every tie, to break off every hindrance, break off every lie. Nothing can hold you back. No human interest. No earthly ties of any sort or kind. Hallelujah. 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 Lord Jesus, bless baby. Bless baby right now. Touch baby's body right now in Jesus' name. Sickness, get off you right now in Jesus' name. It rumbles right now in Jesus' name. That sickness has got to get off of you right now in Jesus' name. Out! Yeah, that's good. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> you go home tonight and you write on your calendar. This is the night that I stepped in to a greater manifestation of the power of God. This is the night that you receive a confidence and an authority from God to be someone different. Father will bring every person in this place to a, such a total surrender that you can point to the very day that you decided you would no longer live. The contrast will be so clearly defined for you that you will know very 
certainly this is the time that I decided that I no longer lived my opinions, my desires, my wants, my dreams, my purposes, nothing. But from this day forward, only for the kingdom. Only, for the, only to fulfill his divine commission and will to do that which he has ordained be done. To go everywhere and preach this gospel with power and authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To give myself fully to the ministry, to the work of the ministry. Thank you, Jesus. Now, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to say it once again. I command this fear and this shame that Satan has tried to put upon Terry and this lie, I curse it now. You must obey me, I break it. And I command her to come. I command her to come now in Jesus' name. Take her place among those who belong in the kingdom of God here in the church. Now, Terry, it doesn't matter if they've got a wheelchair you in here. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care. It's not the issue. The issue is that you're going to have to shake off these heavy bands and step up to the commands of the Lord Jesus Christ and begin to do what God's called you to do and be what God's called you to be. I'll break the shame and the intimidation and all those things that would try to operate in your life. I tell you, it's a new day. If the Lord can't get you one way, he's going to get you another. You listen to me. You can come the easy way or you can come the hard way, but either way, he's going to win. That's what I say. That's what I say. He said, the Father gave you to me and nothing can pluck you out of my hands. How you like that? How you like that? How you like that? How you like that? Say it's a new day. Say it's a new day. A new day. The day star has arisen in my heart. The rivers of life flow out of my belly. The commission of God is a reality in my life. <laughs> Uh, hallelujah. 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 Satan will not be able to hinder you anymore, but the Lord should crush him under your foot. You'll not be able to hinder you anymore and not be able to intimidate you and stand before you and resist you. Ha! <laughs> this is what the Lord says. Everything's changing. Everything's about to change. Everything is rearranging. Do not cast... Do not cast anyone or anything in what it was yesterday. Do not cast it tomorrow in what it was yesterday because everything's changed, everything is new. All you can predict about tomorrow are the things which God has said in his word. That's the only prediction that is right for you tomorrow, those things which God has described. Hallelujah. I say this about your finances. You're not living under the threat of poverty. You're not living under the threat of lack. 
I don't care where you're at, who you are. I don't care what kind of job you have. It ain't about that. It's about the faithfulness of God and His promises to take care of you. In a faith realm, the faith realm that begins to be activated in your life in another dimension because you have a confidence in the faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. The faithfulness of God is nothing but full of faith. Amen. Now with this tender and sensitive heart that the Lord has given you, you can hear the voice of God in such a way. The, the great things of the Spirit be made manifest through your life, but you have to understand at the same time, you can be overly sensitive to what people think and what people do, and Satan can use it against you to stop you. So you have to decide today that you're going to lose your life so that other side can't work. So those other influences can't work against you. Yeah. And then there's only way one dimension to your life, and that's only one dimension to the way that that sensitive and tender heart will work, and that will be its sensitivity to the Holy Ghost, to be able to flow in what God demands. What's up? You're not... Oh. <laughs> it's yours. These things are yours. Sarah. This anointing of the Holy Ghost. This ability to prophesy and declare those things which are in the mind and the spirit of the Lord are yours. This working of faith is yours. This divine anointing Sure. This identity of the power of God and Christ. Yours. Feel. Feel with the boldness of it. Feel with the authority of it. Feel with the divine power of it. Freely I receive. Freely I give to you right now. Ha. Ha. Hallelujah. Ah, you took all in the night as she got in the mood. Say it's a new day. Maya kara monzara daya. Raba irribaya. Lurabak tai. Lurbarbai. Lurbarbai. Sirma. Arma. Yerbi. Arbus. Arabic. Arma. 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 Diverse tongues. Diverse tongues. Diverse tongues. The power to prophesy and to speak the word of life. <laughs> the flow and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. <laughs> Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. It's for right now. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Listen, uh, we want all of you to come every night this week. Come join with us here in the church as we pray. Gathering at 7, right? 7. 
all this next week. We pray and cry now, God, O oh, Sovereign Lord. Raise up labors for the harvest. Raise me up. Raise me up in power. The Lord said, you cannot be my witnesses until you're endued with power from on high. So when you're asking the Lord to raise you up, you're asking him to raise you up in the same power of the ministry of Jesus because that's what he's willed. And we must pray, pray according to his will. Otherwise, our, prayer, our, our prayers and our faith is vain. And I'm telling you, your prayers, I'm, listen, everything that God has ever done, he's done through the prayers of the saints. Every moving of God in an individual's life and every moving of God in a community, in a society, is because some people laid hold on God through prayer and brought forth change. And I'm just to say this, I'm going to say it very loudly. Father has anointed Geneva, Pastor Geneva. God has anointed her. She has an anointing of the Holy Ghost to lead in this revival. She has an anointing to lead. Guess what happens to you if you follow? You get the anointing to lead too. That's what happens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let, this, let the gifts, gifts of God, the coals, the fire of the altar begin to be stirred within your life you, as you begin to cry out to God to do this work in this day, to recognize the moment, the time, the critical hour, the perilous times in which we live begin to lay hold on God for nations. When, when everybody went to the mission training camp this a couple of weeks ago, everyone had to pick a nation, sign to a nation, to get a vision for a nation, to start praying for a nation, to champion a nation. And I'm telling you, you don't have to be just resigned to one. You can get several. I have several right now working on me. To get yourself involved in the heavenly vision on your knees and crying out to God in prayer that's where it all begins you see in standing before him with boldness and petitioning him and in relationship with him being obedient to what he said to do interacting with him and having that wonderful reciprocation of his love and grace it gives more details and definition instruction increase in our life just come be part don't be left out. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because it's going to start a new thing in your life. As you give yourself this, you know, this month, because we started really at the first of this month, as you give yourself this month to praying like this, it's going to change your life because prayer is going to be a part of your life every evening. And then prayer will become a part of your life every morning and evening. And the prayer will become a part of your life every morning and evening and at noon. And then prayer will become a continuous petition in your life. Because the Holy Spirit will begin to take over to another dimension. As you, as you yield, see, as you yield, as you surrender, as you yield, He feels. As you voluntarily give yourself over to do what he wants you to do and you've yielded your will enough as it were he takes full rights and charge over you to move you you're his vessel under his ownership and I just don't know a better way to explain it than that oh Spadamea Lord about a steep Surimangadesh de Allah. 
One thing I do know tonight is I don't want anybody to feel like they left out. I don't want anybody to be sick of heart. I want you to be sick of sin. I want you to be sick of doubt and unbelief. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You just sidestep everything in the way and quit wrestling with it. Just find yourself happy in Jesus, trusting in Him. Let him take care of it. Let Papa take care of it. Quit mixing. Quit mixing it. In Jesus' name, I break off the sorrow. I break it off of you. I break off the sorrow. I break it off of you. That now joy and gladness can rule you. That the peace that passes understanding might be able to rule your heart and your mind. In Jesus' name. Lo rabari, lo rabari, le carabasorebe, lo corosarebe. Risar, Trisha, look at me. In the name of Jesus. Rivasete, in the name of Jesus. Receive this anointing. Receive this divine empowerment, this life in God. To be happy all the day. There it is now. There it is now. There it is, receive. It's yours. These things, these things in God are yours. He's not let you out. You know, some kind of defiled person or whatever. I didn't let you out. He's your, amen. He's yours. You're his, he's yours. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Father, thank you for the faith in Nadine. I thank you for the faith upon her life of God. Oh, Rabba, Baba. I thank you, Lord, that you gave her charge even in her family. Stand, O God, and bridge the gap. Now, Father, I thank you for increasing it now and bringing it forth with greater anointing and with a greater authority. Hallelujah. Oh, God, that she's not left out in any way. Oh, God, but that she has in every dimension the reward that comes to those who faithfully give themselves to seeking you. Hallelujah. Now, in the mighty name of Jesus, and her sisters are going to see it, and the people around her are going to see it, who didn't understand her commitment, who didn't understand her walk, and they're going to see the reward of the Lord. They're going to see the provision that God gives, the blessing that God gives when a person walks with Him and finds their place in His presence. Yeah. Broken off in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. No more. You shot him. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. 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 That's authority with God right there. That's authority with God right there. That's authority with God right there. That's what that is. That's authority with God right there. Authority with God. Lo sabaya nesarikai. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anointing. The Father takes two, makes them one ultimately to fulfill his divine plan and commission in Jesus' name.
have great confidence and boldness and certainty concerning these things which the Lord has said because he's whose promise is faithful to bring it to pass and it should come to pass very shortly and things that have stood in the way can't stand there anymore because as the Lord proclaimed it is a new day and you've agreed with them and so expect these things that God has commanded to change to be changed watch what God does now through you because he's changed it it's easy for you to see and say to the mountain be removed and ask for to nobody Amen. 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 Hurra ba 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 ba. Hurra ba ba ba. Ikara. Ikara ba. Ikere she. Lista. Father, I just thank you that everywhere that Ruth, Anna, and Michaela go, your light will shine, your glory will shine, the power of God will be revealed. Because <laughs> I just see you guys going to spy out the land. You're not just going to go on a tour of Europe. You're going to go spy out the land. You spy out the land. They're going, they're going to some very strategic places. Go spy out the land. Some very strategic spots on the face of the earth where the power of God's going to hit like a rushing mighty wind. I'm talking see Elamon to die. I'm talking about something bigger than a hurricane. Hallelujah. You should got him there. Hallelujah. The nations might be reeling in confusion. Everybody might be in expectation that it's going to blow up at any moment. But I tell you what God's doing. He's about to move by your spirit. While all men are in confusion, Father's about to raise up people that are passionate for him in every nation, in every tribe, every tongue. He's going to have a harvest in these last days that are more than anybody can number. They'll stand upon the throne. Uh, upon the sea of glass before the throne more than anyone can number and John said who are these and the, and the angel said these are they who have washed their garments in the blood of Jesus Christ in the blood of the Lamb <laughs> hallelujah who came out of that great tribulation from Abel until that final day of the catching away <laughs> hallelujah we live in the greatest hour we live in the time that Paul, the apostle, thought he was going to get to be a part of. We there. Hallelujah. We in the last days. We in the last days. And I'm not going to let some cheap little nonsense mortgage keep me out of God's divine, divine plan for my life. I'm not going to let some little thrill of men's appointment Hold me back from God's assignment. Neither are you. I'll chase you around with the word. Amen. I give you no rest. I'll point and laugh. In Jesus' name. Till you rise up out of that place. Take your position among all the mighty ones who stand round about his throne. Just lift your hands towards him. Let Jesus touch you. Be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, you set high in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Nothing but heaven. Nothing but heaven. Nothing but heaven. Nothing but his anointing. Uh, nothing but heaven. No hold upon you. No need for anyone's approval no need for seeking identity other places no need from comfort for other sources but you had the comfort of the Holy Ghost you have the identity of Christ hallelujah isn't that good it's true what's happening over here what's happening with the coals 
Huh? Well, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Take it. Chica Rupai. Now in Jesus' name, everything that Satan would try to do to distract you and hinder you and hold you back from that which God has called you to do, any disheartenment or disappointment, I'll break it. I'll break it off of you. I'll get yourself a heavenly vision, get confident and bold, get filled up right now in Jesus' name and get ready to go because God's going to send you. Just watch. It's not going to be some imagination, some idea, some good plan. Hey, God's getting you ready. Hallelujah. Hey, he's done it his way. Hallelujah. You might as well just rejoice and get happy in Jesus. Get full of thanksgiving. Amen. Great things are about to happen. Great, great, great things about to happen. Ain't nobody around here being left out of nothing. You're not going to wish for a. You're not going to wish for a former day. You're not going to wish for a former day. I'm going to tell you right now. You will not be wishing for a former day. What God's going to do, listen to me, is far bigger than anything that's ever happened. It's far, far bigger than anything you ever thought or planned. Hallelujah. Just watch what I'm telling you. Ain't nobody gonna, there's no one gonna convince you but the Holy Ghost. He's doing the, he's the convincer anyways. I don't need to convince anybody of anything. That's one of the lessons that the Lord's recently taught me. He said, you gotta quit trying to convince people. Spirit of the Lord told me, said, quick to get distracted by those who aren't receiving. Get focused in on what those that are. Leave the rest to me. I just tell him, but Lord, Lord, I don't want anybody left out. Yeah, but you end up fighting with them, and everybody else got to sit on the sideline and feel bad about it all. Thank God for his wisdom, amen? Just don't want anybody to be left out. And many times in the meeting, I leave the 99 and go after the one. It's time for the 99 just to grow, mature, and get comforted and built up in the faith. Hallelujah. It's what God's plan. We're going to go with his plan. <laughs> so what's happening with you? Huh? John Luke, what's happening, buddy? What's happening? How are you doing? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to touch this little life. I ask you, Father, in Jesus' name, to fill him with every good thing and bring him forth, O oh God, into a place of standing with you, walking in your glory doing your will, flowing in your anointing. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, that's a bio. That's good. Hala Sananea. Ha ha ha. Hey, a Hey, a poor Sananea to you. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I command you to be blessed in Jesus' name. I command you to be blessed now. I release you right now. I'm blessed. I release you to be blessed. I release you to be blessed. To be filled up with every good thing. To believe what God has said concerning you. You can do one of two things. You can believe a good report or you can believe a bad report. I counsel you to believe the good report. God's got a good report. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your anointing on this area. Thank you for the anointing. 
Thank you for the anointing, my dear. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just receive. Take it in right there. Hallelujah. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing now? Now how are you doing? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come here. Sure, come here. Put your hands towards heaven. Put your hands towards heaven. <laughs> I got more right here. <laughs> I see Japan shaken by the power yes. of the Holy Ghost. All Japan, all Japan will fall just to one man. Yes. One man full of the Holy Ghost will shake all of Japan. One man. One man full of the Holy Ghost is far greater in might and power than all Satan's kingdom. All Satan's kingdom cannot stand against one man full of the Holy Ghost and power. You be that man. You determine tonight that you take Father up on his call and commission and plan. He demands you leave everything behind. He demands you to go into a place that you know nothing about. To listen only to his command, yes. to his instruction, to his direction that you might receive the inheritance of such a place in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And that's what we're going to do. That's what you're going to do. Nothing about the past will define you. I told, I told Anne, I said, I want to change the name of the church. I want, nothing, I want nothing of the past attached to me. She said, well, you can't do that. I said, well, I, I want nothing of the past attached to me. I'm going somewhere far into the future. I'm going to live as a relic of the past. I don't want to live as something attached to the past. All that was was a step to get to me to where Father wants me to be today to go to the place that he's purposed me to be tomorrow. Come here. Yes, ma'am. Go and grab a good microphone. That one has just been not acting up very, that's been not doing very well. Grab another one of them. I'm just, we're waiting on the Lord. We wait on the Lord. We want absolute everything changed. Touched in my life. I wear the. I I want it, I want everything that Christ Jesus has. I've got a ten-year plan. My ten-year plan is to be to come to the fullness of the measure, the maturity of His ministry. And that means I'm going to leave everything behind. So are you. So are you. So are you. You're not going to be able to stand. You won't, you won't be able to deal with or be comfortable with the things that have happened in your life at this point because God's got a call that cannot be denied. He's got a pull that cannot be resisted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you for a special anointing of your divine grace and ability to worship and play music. 
to flow in the anointing of the Holy Spirit, to flow in signs and wonders and miracles, to function in boldness of divine authority, to know that you've made us kings and priests, that you've not called us to some small ministry, but to greatness in you. In Jesus Christ's name, in the name of the Most High God, anointed, anointed to do this work of the ministry, ordained and commissioned to do these things which Jesus Christ has spoken. No earthly thing. Just come worship the Lord with your offerings, with your tithes, with your giving. Watch God take it and multiply it and increase it in your life. Find a bunch of people around you. Hug them. Tell them that you love them. Bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. Make your work a ministry tomorrow. Make the things that you have going to go and give yourself to do divine appointments in Jesus' name.